Stop this, Harper. That's my brother. What? You have a cripple as a brother? Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Harper, can you stop it? Stop looking down on him. He's crippled, but not dumb. This off. The orphan sibling is defending her crippled brother. Ugh, Victor, how can you let her bring a crippled man in here? It's my freaking wedding, Harper. You don't get to have a say in whatever I do. And Scott is my brother. Stop talking about him in that manner. My wedding day was nearly ruined by my insane sister-in-law. After my parents' death, my crippled brother had relocated to Italy, but I remained here in Canada. I was working as a nurse when I met my husband, Victor, at the hospital. He was rushed in one day after being involved in a terrible accident. It affected his spine, making him only have a 39% chance of walking again. After two weeks, they brought in a therapist to help him with walking. Whenever she wasn't there, I helped him. I wanted him to walk again, no matter what. One day, I was in the middle of his sessions when the door swung open and two women walked in. I could tell they were his mom and sister, seeing the resemblance. However, I wasn't pleased by the girl's behavior. She'd rudely brushed me off and hugged her brother, crying. I concluded that she only did that because they hadn't seen him since the accident happened. But after that day, the girl, who I learned, was Harper, his sister, got worse. She strangely didn't like me for no reason. I stopped visiting his ward for a while. After a week, I returned. It was at night when his family wasn't present. As I walked in, I saw the joy on his face. I checked him and saw that he'd made progress and could stand on his own and take a few steps. I was so excited. He asked for my name and I told him before I finally left. The next day, I was told by the doctor that he was requesting my service and had to be assigned to him again. I was happy, knowing that I could take care of him again. When Harper returned and saw me there, she was visibly angry. She called me out and I followed. Why the hell are you here again? Your brother wanted it. What's your deal with me? And Well, you're my brother's exact type and I can't stand him having anything to do with a low-class nurse like you. Low-class? Her brother's... type? Before I could speak, she stormed back into his ward. I didn't know what to do. On one hand, I wanted to take care of him. But on the other hand, I didn't want to be looked down on like that. I called my brother and told him about it. He asked me to ignore her and go on with taking care of him if it was what I wanted. I followed his words and ignored Harper's foolishness. After two months, Victor was finally able to walk again. On the day he was discharged, he requested my phone number. I was hesitant at first, but when he continued pleading, I had to give it to him. We began talking from there. I couldn't deny that I'd developed feelings for him. Victor was also my type, just as Harper said I was his. When he asked me to be his girlfriend, I didn't hesitate before agreeing. I told my brother about everything, as he was my most trusted confidant. He supported me all through. When Victor proposed marriage, I agreed. My brother couldn't be happier. He'd cried over the phone when I told him about it. I thought about introducing him to Victor. Since he wasn't in the country, we had the introduction over a video call. We spoke at length, and I felt so proud seeing how they spoke like longtime best friends. Although Victor has seen him in a wheelchair, he didn't speak about it until I did. I explained what happened and how it affected us. He sympathized with me and promised to always protect me. I knew I'd found where I belonged, and it was with him. It was soon time to introduce me to his family. My only fear was Harper. His mother wasn't too much of a talker, but she wasn't rude. In fact, she used to get me little appreciation gifts while Victor was still at the hospital. When we got to his house, Harper answered the door. No way, Victor. What are you doing here with her? Victor ignored her and took me in with him. Harper followed us to the living room. As I sat with Victor, she stood before us with crossed arms. Wow, I can't believe this. You really did seduce him because I said you're his type, didn't you? I didn't seduce your brother. I would never stoop so low for a man, Harper. Oh, trying to be a saint, I see. Well, let's see how long you can keep that up. She took her seat opposite us as her parents walked in. It was the first time I was seeing Victor's father. He had a stern look, but he was so nice. They didn't ask us too much. They seemed satisfied to know how we felt about each other. 
With the introduction done, we proceeded to make wedding plans. But Harper was bent on frustrating me. When I wanted to go shopping for my gown, I'd wanted my cousin to go with me, but Harper told me she wanted to go with me instead. I agreed, hoping we would finally get to bond. Well, we arrived at the shop, and things seemed to be going well at first, until it got to when I began testing the gowns. Harper continuously said they were ugly. I kept changing dresses until I got to the last one. I was exhausted already. I thought it looked perfect on me, and fortunately, so did Harper. She rushed to me and pulled me into a hug. I was shocked for a second, but I hugged her back. Suddenly, and very swiftly, she ripped the gown open from the back. I quickly pushed her off. I checked the dress and the tear had completely ruined the dress. What have you done? Isn't it obvious? An orphan and low-class nurse like you should only be in rags, torn rags. Tears immediately gathered in my eyes as I watched her laugh evilly. She left the shop without me. I couldn't leave the dress after it had been destroyed, so I had to buy it, regardless of how expensive it was. I called my cousin in tears and she came to my rescue. She helped with a better dress and paid for it, even though I told her it was fine. You need to put that witch in her place soon, darling. She's growing too many wings. When I got home, I didn't tell Victor about it. He hated how his sister always tried to get on my nerves, so I didn't want them having a fight over me. Anyway, our wedding plan continued to progress. Time flew so fast and the day finally arrived. Harper had wanted to be in my dressing room, but I refused. I didn't trust her one bit. My mother-in-law had also asked me to be careful around her. I'm aware that Harper dislikes you. I know her more than anyone else. Don't let her close to you today. Trust me, she has plans to cause problems here. I was surprised when the woman said that, but I took her advice. My female cousins were all around me to ensure my safety. I couldn't believe I was shaken because of Harper. Victor had called me over the phone to ask if I was okay. I told him about my Harper problem. It was then I also told him what had happened with the first wedding dress. Your mom also asked me to be careful to not let her get close to me, but it's what Harper has been trying to do all day. I'm scared. He assured me that I was going to be fine. He also promised to deal with her after the wedding. We were still on our call when I heard noises outside. I quickly rushed out with my cousins, and there, we met Harper with my brother. Even though I was so excited to see him again, I cared more about putting Harper in her place. Get lost! Crippled people are not allowed here. You're not among us, you hear me? I'll be working for M&M soon, the top fashion brand in Italy and here in Canada. Do you know what that means? It means me and everyone here is better than you. Do get lost. God, she's so foolish. Stop this, Harper. That's my brother. What? You have a cripple as a brother? Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Harper, can you stop it? Stop looking down on him. He's crippled, but not dumb. This awe. The orphan sibling is defending her crippled brother. Ugh, Victor, how can you let her bring a crippled man in here? It's my freaking wedding, Harper. You don't get to have a say in whatever I do. And Scott is my brother. Stop talking about him in that manner. Shut the hell up, Chloe. No, you shut the hell up. Are you crazy? I've kept quiet all this while, but it doesn't mean I'm stupid. One more word from you and you're gonna hate me. Do your worst, bitch. I saw Victor walk toward her with so much anger, but his mom was faster. She landed a resounding slap on her face. How dare you speak to them that way, Harper? But mom, they're orphans and he's a disabled asshole. They're clearly only after Victor's money. This is where I speak, young lady. I'll start by informing you that I'm the owner of M&M, and trust me when I say you won't get to work there or any other fashion brand. Yes, it was my brother's. After he relocated to Italy, he started a fashion brand. He still managed my father's company while he grew his brand. I was shocked to see how far he'd taken it. He established another company in Italy as my birthday gift last year. I handle it from over here while he also helps me, alongside his trusted employees. I only worked as a nurse to pass time. Do you think we're poor nobody's brat? My sister owns Tycon Production in Italy. I'm sure you've heard of it. And by sister, I mean Chloe. Aside from Tycon and M&M, we have one more company. Just so you know, she's wealthy enough to take care of you for the rest of your miserable life. She only works as a nurse as a hobby. 
I smiled at the shock on her face. Victor knew about my company, but he had no idea about my brothers, so he was also shocked. If you don't believe me, try reaching out to the company tomorrow to reject your dismissal. That's what you get for being so evil. You call them orphans, but I'm glad they know who their real parents are. Victor, let it slide. Tell me what you mean, Victor, right this minute. You're adopted, Harper. They knew their parents you don't. Is it clear now? I was shocked. She wasn't their child? She was already in tears now, but no one seemed to be shaken. Her face was full of shame and regret. She tried to run, but my brother tripped her and she fell face down, breaking her nose in the process. I screamed in shock when my brother stood up and moved his wheelchair away. He walked over to Harper and squatted. I am not a crippled man anymore. Stupid. Now get your unfortunate self out of here. Harper stood up and ran away, her nose bleeding. No one followed her. No one seemed to care. I rushed to my brother. How did it happen? The doctors suddenly told me I'd improved, placed me on therapy for a year, and here. I came to surprise you with it. I pulled him into a hug, nearly crying. I hugged him like that for nearly a minute. That's enough, siblings. We have a wedding to continue. We all laughed and went back in to finish our preparations. Harper, who cares about that loser? Absolutely nobody. Our wedding went smoothly, but by the time we got home, we received a call from a hospital. Apparently, Harper had been crying after hearing she was adopted and was about to cross the road when she was knocked down by a bike. From what the doctor said on the phone, she might not be able to walk again. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below saying I subscribed, and we will try our best to reply to your comment. While I tried to avoid them verbally, it appeared that my presence, physically, annoyed them. They wouldn't walk past me without hitting me. My mom would pour all the chores on me and ask me to finish them at an impossible time. When I don't do so, which is always, she would hit me for it. Barely five months after. Scenes of Rival, I'd lost a lot of weight and had bruises all over my body. Hi, my name's Penelope. You might be wondering why I'm in front of a police station. Well, my mom just got locked up and I'd come to see her for a conversation. Nope, it's not one that would lead to her coming out soon. I would rather she remains there for the rest of her life. I'm not a bad daughter. In fact, I've been good to her for as long as I can. I'm an only child. My dad worked as the vice president in his father's company, so we were rich. We stayed in a mansion my dad built with his money, and we had cars and everything. I grew up in wealth. My dad loves me, especially. We were practically best friends. My mom loved me too, but I was closer to my dad. They both made me feel comfortable, but I felt more with my dad. I often told him about my worries and he comforted me. However, things took a tragic turn when he suddenly fell ill. At first it was mild and he only had to skip work for a few hours. Rather than leave home at the usual time, he would stay back for two to three hours and return home earlier than usual. I was forced to ask him what the problem was. It's nothing serious, princess. I just need to rest more. I'll be fine and strong before you know it. His assurance was all I needed. I took his words and hoped for when he'd become better, but he only got worse. Soon he had to be admitted to the hospital, and I knew it was more serious than I knew. I didn't know what it was until I overheard my mom talking to my grandmother over the phone one day after my dad's admission. My grandparents were in Italy, so they had no idea what was going on. According to my mom, my dad had cancer and he was at a delicate stage. I didn't fully understand, but from how my mom sounded, I knew it was very serious. That made me sad. When we went to see him at the hospital, he'd gotten so pale. It was so quick, the changes. I cried in his arms, hoping for him to get better very quickly. Unfortunately, my father's health kept deteriorating. The drugs didn't seem to be working, and the doctor said the cancer was spreading very quickly. I saw my mom turn into a crying mess every night, praying for my dad to get better. It was a devastating period for our family. Eventually, after one year of suffering and trying different treatments, death took my dad. He died at night while my grandparents were watching him. That was the saddest day of my entire life. I cried until I passed out. When I woke up, 
The thought of not seeing my dad again registered in my head, and fresh tears rolled down my eyes. My mother looked like she wanted to die with him. She kept asking them to let her go. Time passed by very quickly. His funeral was done and we had to learn how to live without him. My grandparents and my dad's brother were so kind to us. They put my mom on a monthly salary and took over taking care of me and all my expenses. Life wasn't the same without my dad. I watched my mom become a shadow of herself. She was always crying. If she wasn't sobbing, she had tears in her eyes, waiting to be shed. I tried to be strong for her, even though I was also deeply affected. The house became quiet. My mom rarely talked. Luckily, we had maids, and I was able to have little conversations with them. I patiently waited for when my mom would finally recover from the pain of losing her husband. Time passed, and soon, two years had gone by since I lost my dad. My mom was better and was slowly starting to go for outings again. It was a big deal for me, and I was happy. I noticed her always speaking to someone over the phone, and that person always made her laugh and show happiness. I didn't know who it was, but I was grateful to the person for helping my mother out of her depression. Day by day, her smile brightened even more. One day, I approached her to ask about it. I wanted to know if it was a friend of hers, as I felt obligated to thank whoever it was. It's a friend of mine. Would you like to meet him? He's been asking to meet you, but I didn't know how to tell you about it. I agreed to meet him. I was so excited. When he came, I wasn't surprised how he was able to make my mom feel better. Sean was so nice and full of good energy. He made me laugh so much with his jokes, and I was immediately connected to him. Two months later, my mom revealed that she was dating him and asked if he could move in with us. I agreed. Sean was a good person, at least. That's what I thought. The first month was good. He was still nice to me and helped well with my mom. He would take us out to dates and do so many fun things with us. I felt as though my dad sent him to us, and I thought he was an angel. However, things changed after the first month. Sean became a completely different person. Yes, he was still close to my mom, but he began distancing himself from me. I didn't mind at first, but when it got to a stage where he stopped talking to me completely, I had to talk to him. Did I do something to offend you, Sean? You've been avoiding me? Did I do something wrong? I thought he was going to give me a reason, but the reply I got was a slap that sent me to the floor. Who the hell are you to question me in my house, huh? That person wasn't the Sean I knew a month ago. I tried to speak again, but that only worsened it. He slapped me twice and kicked me roughly on my back. Afterward, he left me there in tears. I'd thought my mom would do something about it after I told her, but she only shunned me and asked me out of her sight, claiming that I was trying to lie against Sean because I was jealous of her happiness. It sounded so stupid. I couldn't believe she would say something like that. I was only 13. How could I be jealous of her relationship? Anyway, I tried to avoid them from then on. I only spoke when I was spoken to and ensured to not get on their nerves. Unfortunately, that didn't work. While I tried to avoid them verbally, it appeared that my presence physically annoyed them. They wouldn't walk past me without hitting me. My mom would pour all the chores on me and ask me to finish them at an impossible time. When I don't do so, which is always, she would hit me for it. Barely five months after, Scenes of Rival, I'd lost a lot of weight and had bruises all over my body. One time, he'd smashed a dish on the floor in anger, very close to my feet. Somehow, some of the pieces met my skin and injured me, making me have bruised feet too. My mom stopped sending me to the hair salon, so my hair was in a bad condition too. I was forced to cut it, regardless of how much I cherished how long it was. The cut was uneven, but I didn't mind. Neither my mom nor Sean even acknowledged it. Mom and Sean turned me into their slave. I had to even mow the lawn, cook for them and serve them and clean the whole house. They began throwing parties in the house, drinking and smoking with dangerous looking people. I was always scared to leave my room and had to stay longer in school. About seven months later, when I couldn't hold it in anymore, I visited my uncle and told him about everything. He wanted to go to my mom, but I refused. I didn't want to continue living with her. Without wasting time, he called my grandparents. They were pissed to hear about my mom's behaviors. They immediately arranged for me to relocate to Italy to be with them. I thought my mom would oppose it, but the reverse was the case. You can take her, I don't give a damn. I would have sold her off or something if y'all had come to take her later. 
To hell with you, Penelope. I was hurt and felt betrayed, but there was nothing I could do. I needed my sanity, so I left with my grandparents. For 10 whole years, my mom didn't call me. I heard from my uncle that she was living her life with Sean. It hurt me so much, but I didn't dwell on it for too long. Once I clocked 24, my grandfather passed away. It was sad news for me, as he and my grandmother had acted like my parents. I was so devastated, but I needed to be strong for my grandmother. He was given a proper funeral, then his will was read. He divided his properties between my uncle, I, and my grandmother. Things took a different turn when my uncle gave me 80% of his, as he was wealthy himself and thought I deserved it more. My grandmother gave all of hers to me. I felt so loved. I needed to return to my birth country to take over my grandfather's company. I took my grandmother with me, since I couldn't leave her alone. However, news somehow got to my mom about the inheritance I received, and she found her way to the mansion I lived in with my grandmother. She knelt before us in tears. I don't know what came over me. I regretted letting you go, Penelope. I still do. I'm your mother and I love you. I would never intentionally throw you out of my life. Your father's death made me mentally unstable that I was just doing so many things wrongly. I already started receiving therapy. I'm trying to be a good mother again. I wanted to forgive her. I wanted to see her get better and make up for her wrongdoings. So I did. I forgave her. My grandmother also did. She began visiting the house again, and I ensured that I always gave her money whenever she came. However, things took a different turn when I started getting calls from my bank about suspicious withdrawals and spending. I was informed about the purchase of a car, luxury items, and lavish trips on my card. Only then did I realize my card had been stolen and that my mom was a prime suspect. She'd left a lot of debt in the card. She did stop visiting for a month, so I knew she'd use that time to live lavishly with Sean. I couldn't take it. I immediately reported her to the police. The credit card was locked, so she couldn't use it anymore. The next day, she visited me. While I pretended to get her water, I called the police. Barely 20 minutes later, they arrived, and my mom was arrested and put behind bars. I went straight to my dad's house afterward, with more policemen, and threw Sean out of the house, ignoring his pleas. Three days later, he tried to break into my house at night but got electrocuted by the barbed wires. His scream woke us up. On seeing him on the floor, the police were immediately contacted, and he was taken. At the station, he confessed that my mom had told him to break into my house to steal some money. Apparently, she'd found a place in the library where I kept my money. He was also put behind bars immediately, and my mom's jail term was increased by five more years. No matter how much she begged me, I refused to forgive her a second time. I also warned her to never show herself before me if she got out alive, or I was going to send her back to jail. I hope she adheres because I would definitely not go back on my words. An evil mother like her deserves no atom of pity from me. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below saying I subscribed, and we will try our best to reply to your comment. So long as you are living in our house, you will obey us and get a job and give us your paycheck. We will of course start giving you an allowance from it, so long as George has everything that he will need. That isn't fair. Why does he get everything handed to him? It's part of the privileges of being born first and a male. We're twins though, and I have just as much potential. You don't make me laugh. Then prepare to laugh, you jackass, because I was accepted into medical school. Hi there, my name is Megan, and I'm in a bit of a difficult situation, and I would love to get your opinion on what I should have done differently. For starters, I have struggled all my life for any sort of recognition. My brother and I are twins. And even though I was born first, he was always given more attention. As I grew up, I realized that it was entirely because he was a male. My parents just saw me as inherently weaker just because I was born a girl. They never gave me a chance to prove that I was smart and that I would amount to anything. My parents always just assumed that since I was a girl that I would disappoint them. My brother's name is George and he was always spoiled. My parents would hire expensive tutors to help him get the best grades possible and would hire coaches to help him perfect how to play various sports. Honestly, they signed him up for so many things. That looking back now, I wondered why he didn't have a nervous breakdown. But at the time, I was jealous. To me, it just looked like they were ignoring me and giving all their attention and love to him. 
It made me so furious at them. Okay, so George, your piano practice is at three and your track and field coach will pick you up from practice and train you until seven tonight. So make sure that you bring a snack so you don't pass out again. Um, yes, mom. Hey, I would love to learn piano. Can I take lessons as well? You? Are you kidding? Why on earth would we waste money on a loser like you, Megan? The only thing you will ever be good for is marrying a rich man and giving him lots of babies. But I have no doubt that you will probably screw that up too somehow. Mom, why would you say that? It's just reality, Megan. Your brother has way more potential than you do. Now stop wasting my time. It was infuriating and at the time I hated my brother for it even though it wasn't really his fault. Sadly, my father was even worse. And once my brother and I became teenagers, we were even given different food too. Our parents would spend lots of money on organic fruits and vegetables for my brother along with steak and the best cuts of meat. Whereas I was told to eat frozen dinners, which were terrible. Every meal, I would stare at my brother and watch him shovel expensive meals down his throat while I ate frozen dinners that cost a fraction of what he ate. Why does George get to eat so well and I have to eat this flavorless garbage? We've been over this, Megan. George needs the best nutrition possible so that he can maintain his muscle mass and do well in sports. You don't play anything, and to be honest, you should probably eat less so that you don't become any fatter than you already are. It was such a load of crap. I was actually the ideal weight, but that didn't stop their words from hurting my feelings. George, to his credit, kept silent. It would have been nice if he had stepped up to defend me, but either he didn't care or that he was afraid to. Either way, I was just as furious with him as I was with my parents who were monsters. At any rate, there really wasn't much I could do. But then my dad broke his leg and while we were in the hospital, I saw how the doctors and nurses cared for him. And I knew that that was what I wanted to do with my life. Even though my family treated me like a complete loser, I wanted to help make other people's lives better by helping them in their time of need. It was hard going, of course, because my parents would never in a million years pay for me to go to school. So I got a part-time job in secret and started saving money. I knew that I would have to rely on scholarships and to get a student loan, but it would all be worth it. Finally, when I graduated from high school, I applied to medical school and was accepted. I was even given a scholarship that would cover a large portion of my expenses and even included a dorm room as well. It was then that things really took a hard turn for me though. Okay, so the two of you have finally graduated from high school, which means it's time for George to go away for school. Megan, that means that you can't slack off anymore. It's time for you to get a job so that you can help pay for your brother's schooling. Why would I do that? Can he get a job and help himself? Why can't you guys pay for it on your own? Don't be so selfish, Megan. If you help George now, he might even take pity on you later in life and make sure that you don't end up living on the streets. So long as you are living in our house, you will obey us and get a job and give us your paycheck. We will, of course, start giving you an allowance from it, so long as George has everything that he will need. That isn't fair. Why does he get everything handed to him? It's part of the privileges of being born first and a male. We're twins, though, and I have just as much potential. You don't make me laugh. Then prepare to laugh, you jackass, because I was accepted into medical school. How dare you speak to your father that way? And with what money do you plan to use to pay for this school? I've had a part-time job for years, plus I have a scholarship to help out as well. So you have money already? And you think you can just be selfish and use it for yourself? I've worked hard for it. It's my money to decide what to do with it. Megan, if you go to that school, then you are never welcome back here. To be honest, that was my plan to begin with. I knew it would be hard, but I had no intentions of ever going back home after I went to college. The years studying to become a doctor were very hard, but in the end, it was all worth it. I made friends in school that became roommates later until I could afford a place on my own. The holidays hurt and were a bit depressing since I was all on my own. But it was worth it to know that I had made something of myself and that I was making a difference in the world. The years passed and I started to really make a name for myself at the hospital that I was working for, when suddenly I got a call one day saying that someone was in the emergency room and was asking for me. When I went down, I saw that it was George and he did not look very well. Hey George, what are you doing here? Hey Megan, listen, I know that I have no right to ask this of you, 
but can you please help me? I'm here because I overdosed. Please, I need your help to get clean and away from mom and dad. My heart was breaking for him, and even though I didn't know if it was a good idea or not, I chose to help him. Yes, I will help you, but why are you here and why do you want to get away from mom and dad? Well, I got injured while playing sports, and rather than taking time to heal, mom and dad started giving me painkillers to make me numb so that I could keep playing. It didn't take long before I started needing the pills more and more, and I got addicted. They knew this, and so they used them to control me. Whenever they wanted me to do something, they would threaten to cut me off if I didn't do as I was told. Please, Megan. I really need to get help. I can't keep living like this. I promised that I would help him and I brought him to my house and gave him some new clothes and a hot meal. He was incredibly grateful and the next day when I was at work, he spent the entire day cleaning my house and even made us dinner. It was incredibly unexpected and considering how he was still under the weather, it was incredibly sweet of him to do so. For weeks he kept doing things like that. He even began repairing little things around the house that I had neglected. I told him that he didn't have to but he said that it helped him to keep busy. Around that time, I helped him sign up for a rehab program and became his sponsor. It was a difficult journey for him, but with my help, he stayed clean, and I even helped him get a job as a contractor. He had shown that he was very skilled at house construction and repairs. It made him happy to work repairing people's houses, and it kept him occupied and drug-free. However, one day I came home to find my parents on my front porch banging on the door. George, let us in. You've had enough of a vacation, but it's time to come home. Yes, George. We need you to make money to help us. You wouldn't want us to starve, would you? We have your medication. Surely you need a fix by now. What is wrong with you people? He finally got clean and here you are trying to use his addiction to manipulate him. Have you no shame? Oh look, it's the loser that is trying to steal our son from us. Just mind your own business, idiot. George, you come out right now. I was so angry that I pushed them both off my porch and they landed in a muddy puddle. They had grown rather frail, and it was very easy to overpower them. With them out of the way, I unlocked the door and slipped inside before locking it again. George was inside and was in tears. I finally realized that he had been traumatized by our parents just as much, if not worse than myself. I held him and comforted him while I called the police and had our parents dragged away. I then applied to get a restraining order put on them so that they couldn't come anywhere near my home, which of course they broke resulting in them serving jail time. After that, they stopped harassing us for some time. I knew deep down that they wouldn't give up, but I also knew that I needed to protect my brother from them. And so it went on like that for a couple years, until I heard that my parents had been forced to move into an assisted living home. Without my brother giving them money though, they were forced to move into one that they could afford and I knew that it was a terrible place. The staff weren't medical professionals and treated their patients like animals. They lasted a few years there before they passed away. Neither George or myself went to either of their funerals, but I am happy to say that we are doing great. It's so amazing to have my brother in my life and although we have a small family, we are incredibly happy and spend all the holidays with each other. The only thing I regret is all the years that our parents kept us apart. Thanks for watching, please subscribe to the channel. It took the convincing of the family members to get my parents to agree to keep me. Everyone knew I wasn't loved or wanted by my parents, and it was my worst experience while growing up. Whenever I had fights with my cousins, they always yelled about how my parents hated me. My parents weren't helping matters either. They would go for family gatherings and parties with just my brother. When people asked about me, my father would say, Why should we care? She should watch over the house. We didn't ask the universe for her. I managed to grow up in the midst of such discrimination. Two years ago, my parents disowned me. Was it sad for me? Not in any imagination. I was filled with happiness when they did. My name is Reina and I'm 25 years old. I was born into a family where the male child was valued the most and it wasn't even hidden. My elder brother Jude was born three years before me. According to what I was told by my elder cousins, my parents didn't want me when they discovered my gender. It took the convincing of the family members to get my parents to agree to keep me. Everyone knew I wasn't loved or wanted by my parents, and it was my worst experience while growing up. 
Whenever I had fights with my cousins, they always yelled about how my parents hated me. My parents weren't helping matters either. They would go for family gatherings and parties with just my brother. When people asked about me, my father would say, Why should we care? She should watch over the house. We didn't ask the universe for her. I managed to grow up in the midst of such discrimination. My brother wasn't intelligent, so he didn't do well at school. He finished his high school education two years before me, but because he couldn't get into college as a result of failing the entrance exams continuously, I got into college before him. My father was jealous of that. As a result, he asked me to drop out of school. You have to leave school. Jude is a man. He should be in college first. But he can't get in. He's not brilliant and can't pass the entrance exams. I passed, so why should I drop out because of him? How dare you think you have the right to question my decisions? Who do you think you are? Wow. Unwanted children should soak in depression, not be confident. Usually, in cases like this, the mother supported the girl child who was unloved. But my mother was a different person. She would agree to every word my father uttered. To her, too, a girl child was useless. Once, when I'd accidentally broken a plate, she told me how she hated me. I regret birthing you. I hate you so much, you stupid child. The other women have only boy children. Why were you given to me? How dare you break my plate? It was just a plate. I wondered why she said so many hurtful things. When my father returned home that night, she reported to him and made sure he disciplined me through beating. So, when she called me an unwanted child that day, I wasn't surprised. I insisted on not dropping out for my brother. Well, if you won't drop out, pay your fees yourself. Pay everything yourself, stupid child. I had no idea where I would get the money to pay, but I boasted that I'll find my way without them. Fortunately for me, two days later, a scholarship program was announced. I immediately hopped on it and requested to take the exam. I knew I was very intelligent, so I was sure of securing a spot. However, a twist happened when it was suddenly announced that only two people would be picked from my college, instead of the initial 10 that was said in the announcement. I was worried throughout the week. My college was known for breeding very brilliant students. I knew it would be a huge competition. Since they were only going to pick two people, I decided to forget about being among those two. How on earth was I going to beat the numerous brilliant ones to win a spot? I was shocked when two days later, I was informed that I was the first of the two students who were picked for the scholarship. I was surprised. It was all like a dream until I signed the agreement to be sponsored throughout my college education. I burst into tears afterward, unable to contain my emotions. When I got home and announced the news to my parents, I could see the jealousy in their eyes. Should that make us happy? Is it new to you that we don't care about whatever happens in your life? Our son can't pass his entrance exams and you managed to pass and even get a scholarship. Don't you think it's insensitive of you to tell us about that? Insensitive? I couldn't understand how it could be termed insensitive to share good news. Anyway, I retired to my room that night. Two weeks later, my parents came to me with a strange request. We were thinking about going to your school first, but Jude thought it would be better to speak to you first. Why? Is there a problem? Well, I'm going to be straight with you. Your father and I want you to give up the scholarship for your brother. We think he deserves it. We plan to borrow some money. We're going to use that to sponsor you ourselves. I knew the exact reason they requested that. My parents loved to boast. If my brother got the scholarship, it would be a great honor to them. However, I got it instead. My parents can't tell anyone that their unwanted child had the scholarship, so they thought of a better way to boast with it, and that came up. Well, I'm sorry, but it's impossible to do that. Jude isn't brilliant to start. Secondly, it's impossible to give my scholarship to him. Who are you to say that? We're going to your school to confirm. Fool. We'll go to the college ourselves to make the request. It was a mistake coming to you. True to their words, they were at my school the next day to request a switch. To their disappointment, they were given the same response. It was impossible to switch the spots. My parents went home disappointed and pissed at me because the school's president praised me for being a great student. Surprisingly, two months later, Jude suddenly got admitted into my college. I had no idea how that happened, but he did. Even worse, the few cousins who still found me worthy told me about my parents boasting about my brother's supposed scholarship into my school. I was confused, but I brushed it off. I also didn't think about how he got in anymore. All I was focused on was how to maintain my scholarship. I managed to scale through college. 
Throughout our years of being in college, not everyone knew we were siblings. My brother ignored me like I was a plague. He also was known for spending lavishly. We weren't wealthy, but we were doing well. However, with our status, my brother wasn't supposed to have that luxury. In his second year, my parents got him a car. I was shocked. All I could think of was where and how they got the money. As if my brother's case wasn't enough, my parents were also spending insanely from the moment my brother got into college. They went on vacations, shoppings, and even bought unnecessary things. Of course, I wasn't given the luxury. On my graduation, my parents bought me a dress worth $8,000. According to them, they'd kept that money aside to surprise me on my graduation. I couldn't believe my ears. Seeing my parents smiling at me and speaking to me softly was scary. However, with a little more affection at my graduation, I thought it would be fair to accept them. I concluded that they were sorry about their actions and that was the best way they could think of an apology. However, to my utmost shock, they returned to their old ways immediately after my graduation. I was disappointed. Nevertheless, I went on with my life. I managed to secure a well-paying job two months later. Of course, my parents knew about it. I was confused when, three months later, I got a call from a student loan organization requesting to see me in their office. I was curious and confused, so I honored their call the next day. On getting there, I was asked how I was going to pay my loan. Loan? What loan? I never took any loan. You can imagine my surprise when I was informed that my parents took a student loan of $250,000 in my name four years ago. They'd lied about them not being able to afford my fees and promised to pay the loan once I got a job. I was also told that my parents had called them to inform them that I'd gotten a job and it was time to take the loan from me. Furious, I left the office and went straight home. How could you both do this to me? Where do you expect me to get $250,000? You could have aborted me if you didn't want me, rather than put me through pain all my life. I knew the money they'd been lavishly spending since Jude got into college was the loan they took. They didn't use it for me. How could they lie? Well, have you forgotten so soon that we spent $10,000 on you for your graduation? Oh, that? I'll pay for that. But I will not pay the rest of the loan. Never! I left the house, ignoring their threats, and headed back to the loan company. I explained everything to them and made them know I was only going to pay for the 8 k they spent on me. The loan company refused and asked that we settle our difference and decide who would pay. I knew things weren't going to go well in that situation, so I got myself a lawyer and we filed a case against my parents. They were furious when they found out. How dare you file a case against your own parents, you evil child? Well, how dare you take such a huge amount of loan in the name of your own just for the sake of your favorite child? I'm human too. Do you think I don't feel bad about how you both treat me? Well, if you feel bad, leave our lives. Yes, take your unfortunate self out of our lives. If you're finding it hard to do that, I'll make it easy. Henceforth, you cease to be my child. You don't belong to this family anymore. Well, thank you. I never did anyway. With that, I stormed out. The case got into court and after about a week, it was decided that my parents would pay their share while I pay my $10,000. I got myself a comfortable apartment and moved out of their house. My parents had to sell their house and move to a smaller one to pay half of the loan. Jude quit college. Apparently, my parents had bribed his way in and were also paying to promote him. Since there was no money anymore, he was forced to get a menial job. Meanwhile, my mom got a job as a nanny, where she earned $200 per month, and my dad got a job as a security guard from what I hear Thieve beat the hell out of him one night and even broke his leg. Every month, the loan company took 99% of their salaries, leaving them to feed on peanuts. Until the remaining $230,000 was paid, they would have to work their ass out. I was able to pay mine after a year, and I'm a free lady now, enjoying the fun of life without my parents and brother. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below saying I subscribed and we will try our best to reply to your comment. Just then, Evelyn's mother charged at me and spun me around and began pushing my chair out of her house and towards the busy street. 
I only managed to engage the emergency brake just in time to avoid being pushed into traffic. As a result, Evelyn's mother lost her footing and slammed down hard onto the sidewalk. As she got up, she made a move to grab my chair and try to tip it, and so I slapped her as hard as I could to make her back away. Once she did, I turned the brake off and got out of there as quickly as I could. Hi there, my name is Curtis, and I have quite the story to share with you. It's quite the ride actually, and involves quite a bit of drama, although I really wish that that wasn't the case. At any rate, my story begins just after college. I had just graduated from law school and was looking to find a firm that would hire me. Thankfully, my good grades had already gotten me some attention from a few firms, and I was trying to decide which one to work for when I saw the most beautiful woman I had ever seen in a coffee shop. I knew that I had to introduce myself, and so I went over and said hi and told her my name. At first, she was a bit hesitant to speak with me, but I put the charm on, and within a few minutes, she was laughing, and we were making plans to go out on a date. She told me her name was Evelyn, and that she had just graduated from medical school, and was on the fast track to becoming a surgeon. I found this fascinating, of course, and I knew that she and I would make for a great pair. I was of course worried that she would stand me up though. After all, I can be pretty charming, but there is a major catch. You see, not everyone can get past the fact that I'm in a wheelchair. Sadly, I was born with a rare condition that made my legs useless. I still have feeling in them, but sadly, I will never be able to walk. But I have come to terms with it, and I have never let it hold me back. But it is a hard thing for most people to accept. So when Evelyn showed up, and we ended up having a lovely time, I was beyond happy. The next few months were wonderful. We went on dates and really got to know one another. I was so happy that she was incredibly intelligent and had a great sense of humor too. We were madly in love, but then it came time to introduce each other to the other's family. Mine was very welcoming and accepted Evelyn with open arms, but Evelyn's side did not go so well. Her father had left her mother and Evelyn when she was very young, and Evelyn had told me that her mother had hated men ever since, but something told me that she didn't care for me because of other reasons. Hello, mother. This is Curtis. This? This is Curtis? Are you sure you didn't leave half of him outside? Mother. Oh, it's okay, Evelyn. Your mother just has a very good sense of humor. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, it was just a bad joke. Nice to meet you, Kurt. I of course knew that it wasn't a joke and that she very clearly didn't like me very much. The fact that she shortened my name from two syllables to one only reinforced the fact that she hated me. I tried not to take it personally, but I knew that it probably had something to do with my being in a wheelchair. Perhaps she hated all men, but she especially hated me. Over the next few years, Evelyn's mother would constantly ask her if she was still dating wheels. It was a derogatory nickname that she had given me. Although she never said it to my face, she always used it over the phone when she spoke with Evelyn. As annoying as she was, I chose to ignore her. After all, I was in love with Evelyn and not her mother. So while it bothered me that she hated me so much, I knew that it didn't really matter since Evelyn and I were in love and were making plans to get married once she finished her residency. Around the same time, I was being offered a position as a junior partner in the law firm that I worked for. Things were really looking up for us. At least they were until Evelyn began working more chaotic hours at the hospital. Her shifts were longer than they used to be, and she was always tired when she was home. I felt sympathy for her because it looked as though they were working her to the bone. I was incredibly worried for her, and I wanted her to take a step back before she burned herself out, but she wouldn't listen. My love, you need to remember that you are only human, and if you keep going like this, you'll burn out. It's okay. I can handle it. Evelyn, you're working too hard. You need to rest more. Work? Oh yes, yes. I know, but I need to put in my time until I get a full-time position. I just need you to be patient. I can be patient, but I hate seeing you burning the candle at both ends like this. I was so worried about Evelyn, and when she started to get thinner than she already was, and began to have dark circles around her eyes all the time, I knew that something wasn't right. I tried to go to her mother to tell her that I needed her help to convince Evelyn that she needed to slow down and prioritize her health, but she was no use. Something is wrong, and she needs us to support her. Please, I need you to help convince her to slow down. She is passionate about her job, but if she keeps going like this, she will kill herself. Hardly. 
All she needs to drop the dead weight, that dead weight being you. My daughter is going to really make something of herself and she doesn't need to date someone as disgusting as you. I doubt that you could even give me a grandchild. I bet nothing below the waist works on you. Honestly, I don't know why Evelyn would ever date some cripple. Can you be sensible for one minute? Your daughter needs you and all you can think about is how much you hate me. Forget about me for a minute and just focus on the fact that your daughter needs your help. Just then, Evelyn's mother charged at me and spun me around and began pushing my chair out of her house and towards the busy street. I only managed to engage the emergency brake just in time to avoid being pushed into traffic. As a result, Evelyn's mother lost her footing and slammed down hard onto the sidewalk. As she got up, she made a move to grab my chair and try to tip it, and so I slapped her as hard as I could to make her back away. Once she did, I turned the brake off and got out of there as quickly as I could. The next day, I woke up to the sounds of breaking glass. I raced outside and saw Evelyn throwing rocks through the windows of my car. What are you doing? What does it look like? I'm making you suffer for attacking my mother. How dare you try to rape her? What are you talking about? I went to see her to get her to help you. You've been acting very chaotic lately, and I'm really worried about you. That's all. Oh yeah? Is that why she has a black eye and fat lip and scrapes all over her body? You disgust me. That isn't what happened. Your mother attacked me and tried to push me into traffic. I was just defending myself. Just then, Evelyn threw a rag soaked in lighter fluid that was on fire into my car. Within seconds, the whole thing was engulfed in flames. I don't believe you, and I can't imagine why I was ever attracted to a cripple like you. My mother was right. You're barely half a man. Yeah. She left before the fire department arrived, and even they arrived too late to save my car. It was a custom-built one, too, that was made specifically for me, so that I could drive. I could not believe what had happened. Evelyn had let her mom turn her against me and over something that I didn't even do. Part of me was still in love with her, but at the same time, I wanted nothing to do with her. Instead, I reached out to her friends and begged them to get help for her, but Evelyn's mother had poisoned their opinions of me as well. More than a few told me that they were glad that Evelyn had been cheating on me now, knowing that I was a monster that would attack Evelyn's mother. They would not believe me when I tried to tell them the truth. In the end, I sued Evelyn and had her charged with the destruction of my property. The court awarded me $32,000 in damages, which helped me to replace the car she had destroyed, but the only other punishment they gave her was dozens of hours of community service. It was a slap on the wrist, really, but I didn't care. I was no longer tied down to her, and that was enough to make me feel some relief. That is, until a few years later, when a client approached me and wanted to sue Evelyn for medical malpractice. As it turned out, the man that Evelyn had cheated on me with had introduced her to drugs, and she got hooked. It was the real reason that she was always tired and looked like death warmed over. Well, her addiction affected her job, and she was making constant mistakes and nearly cost my client their life as a result. We ended up suing her for hundreds of thousands of dollars, and she ended up losing her license as a result. After that, her life took a huge turn for the worse. Without a job to pay for her addiction, her and her boyfriend ended up stealing in order to get money to buy drugs. It didn't take long for them to get arrested and sent to prison. After that, she was in and out of jail for years before I finally lost track of her. As for her mother, the stress of her daughter being in and out of jail caused her to have a stroke which left her severely paralyzed. She lost all function on the left side of her body and was confined to a wheelchair. One day while out shopping, I happened to see her in the same shop. I could tell that she was hoping that I wouldn't notice her, and her eyes bulged out of their sockets when she saw that I noticed her and made my way over to her. I could see that she was terrified, and I relished that fact. All I did was lean over towards her. Good to see you out and about. Wheels. Then I smiled and winked and left her there stunned and in shock. I was just happy to have dodged a bullet. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below saying I subscribed and we will try our best to reply to your comment. Why didn't you die in my stomach, huh? I hate you so much. I don't want to keep on seeing you. If you do, you see that is my biological mother. Let me share my story. Hi, my name's Cherry Wilson. I'm 26 years old and live with my adoptive parents. 
They're the best things that ever happened to me, alongside my brothers. My real parents abandoned me 20 years ago, when I was only six. Then I did expect to be abandoned. They'd threatened me with it countless times. My biological parents are people who don't believe that having female children was good. I was born after two years of their arranged marriage. My biological father's father was a wealthy man, same with my mom's father. They were both only children and already wrote for marriage. To secure a partnership with them, they'd proposed marriage to their kids. Since they had no choice but to agree, they got married. Their parents wanted the house to be filled with male children. Both were demanding for a male, and my parents needed a son too. They believed a boy would make them proud. However, my birth shattered their hearts. Once, when I was five years of age, I overheard them arguing, and I was the center of it. Well, I'm tired too. I never wanted a girl. I regret having her just as much as you do. Then agree to my suggestion. We should put her up for adoption and pray for a boy. We can't do that. People are going to talk. They'll tag us as the couple who couldn't birth a boy and ended up putting their daughter up for adoption. Ah, I hate this. Where's that stupid child? Where the hell is she? Cherry. Innocently, I walked up to her. My mother landed a resounding slap across my face. Why didn't you die in my stomach, huh? I hate you so much. I don't want to keep on seeing you. I was a smart child, so I understood what she meant. It wasn't the first time. I think I would have still understood because those words were like an anthem. Whenever she spoke to me like that, I couldn't help my tears. A month later, my mom fell pregnant. I got even worse treatment from them, as they strongly believed it would be a boy. The universe frowned upon me when the child was born, as he ended up being a boy. My little self panicked so much when my dad received the news through a phone call. Get ready to leave our house. My wife has brought our real child to life. Those words killed the child in me. I was left alone in the big house. The maids also regarded me as trash, so they barely paid attention to me. Two days later, my mom returned home with the new baby. I tried to follow them in, but I was pushed roughly by my father. Where do you think you're going? To touch my child? You're nothing to us. He's our only child, moron. I was so young to be treated in that manner, but they didn't care. That night, together, they took me out of the house and threw me into the streets. Leave our lives and never show your face. I wish you would get kidnapped or killed, fool. I was just a child. I cried and begged, but they turned a deaf ear to me. When I grabbed my dad's legs, he pushed off roughly, causing me to hit my head on the floor. I passed out immediately. I woke up hours later in a strange room with a strange lady there. I couldn't speak. The lady lifted me up and fed me. I had bandages around my head and arm. After eating, I had the strength to speak. I asked who the lady was and where I was, and she explained that she found me unconscious on her way back from work. She worked at an adoption agency and had no choice but to bring me there. Another lady also came into the room. They made me feel comfortable, and when I was better, they took me to join the other children. They did try to reach my biological parents, but they gave their full permission for me to be adopted. According to what I eavesdropped from the conversation, they told the workers that I was bad luck and they didn't need me. It was a sad period for me. I was barely seven years old, but my little brain could already understand a lot. The workers helped me as well, to forget it all and begin life afresh. By the time I was seven, my adoptive parents adopted me. They were the sweetest. It was hard for me to loosen up with parents again, as I suffered from the trauma of my real parents' behaviors, but they worked hard in getting me to see how much they loved me. My real parents never sent me to school, but my adoptive parents did. Even more, it was an expensive school. Their whole family never made me feel like I was adopted. Everyone loved me. However, four years later, at age 11, my adoptive parents had their first real child. It turned out to be a boy. When I heard the news from my grandmother, I went into a deep state of panic. I was used to being loved by them. So the news of them having a son of their own brought in a rush of emotions. I wasn't happy because I thought my time in their lives had ended. My real parents abandoned me after they had a son and I thought they would do the same. My grandmother understood my fear and immediately began to comfort me. She assured me that I was part of the family and they would never let go of me for anything. 
It was hard to get me calm, but it eventually happened. On getting to the hospital, I broke down again, but my adoptive dad was there for me. They told me I was their first child and first daughter, and having a son would never change that. We love you, Cherry. Do not be scared. We will never abandon you. My adoptive mom also comforted me. I held my new brother in my hands, and I became even calmer. Life was good with a new member in the family. My family ensured to show us equal love. I also showered my brother with love. Our family got even happier. At age 16, in my final year in high school, my parents had another son. This time, I was even happier than them. I was overjoyed to have another member added to the family. I took care of the baby like he was my own son. The memories I was making with them covered the sad ones from my real parents. I barely even remembered them. I was in a better place. For my high school graduation, my parents got me a car. I couldn't believe my eyes. This is to show you how much we love and appreciate your presence in our lives, Cherry. Thank you for making things easy and even better for us. We love you, baby. I burst into tears. My parents pulled me into a hug, whispering comforting words to me. My friends congratulated me. I was happy. I took exams for college and passed. My dad had started a chocolate company, so I went into business school to assist in handling it. My parents were proud of my decision. I'd wanted to ask you, but I wanted you too to choose what you want. You're so thoughtful, baby. Your dad and I are proud of you and grateful for you. I was glad to have made that decision. I spent five years in business school. By the time I finished, my dad's company had grown even more. I began working immediately as the vice president. My younger brother was almost done with high school and had told me he was also going to join the business. I began to train him immediately. My other brother aspired to become a medical doctor, so he cared less about the business. Life was going smoothly for our family. Two years into being a vice president, we opened a different branch and my dad handed its management to me. I was immensely grateful and worked hard to make him proud. And I did. In just one year, my dad's products were the highest selling chocolate. One day, I got a private call from an unknown number. I was hesitant to answer the call. However, when the caller persisted, I was forced to answer. Hello? Cherry on the line. How may I help you? Cherry, my daughter, it's your mom, darling. I was confused. Why would my mom call me with an unknown number? Also, her voice sounded different and strangely familiar. I knew that caller wasn't my adoptive mom. There was only one other mother I had, my biological mother. I was furious. How dare you call me your child? Have you no shame? Why the hell did you call me? How on earth did you even get my private number? It doesn't matter, Cherry. I need your help. Your father died six years ago, and his family sent your brother and me out. My family took me in, but they sent me out last year because their company went bankrupt. We can barely feed, Cherry. Your brother doesn't even go to college anymore, and no one is willing to employ a dropout. Help us, Cherry. Her audacity was shocking. I couldn't believe how shameless she was. After destroying my childhood, how did she get the courage to call me again? I ended the call without saying a word, as I knew I would say a lot of hurtful things to her if I spoke. She continued calling nonstop, but I refused to pick. During dinner with my family, her calls still kept coming in. Pick up your call, baby. Why are you ignoring it? I was hesitant to tell her the truth of who it was, but I eventually did. I don't know how she got my number, but isn't she so shameless? Answer her, darling. Help her out this once. You're good, unlike her. It took three days, but they finally managed to convince me. I finally answered the call. I got her bank details and wired a large sum of money to her. Don't ever call me again. I don't want to have anything to do with you. I thought it would end there. But a month later, she called again. I gave birth to you. You can't just abandon me. Send us more money. Your brother's school took more than half of the one you sent. Send us some money, Cherry. I'm a man, and I'm going to be better than you in the future. I might remember to help you then. That was it for me. I lashed out at them very disrespectfully and told them to never call me again. However, they didn't stop until I was forced to abandon the phone. A week later, they showed up at the company. She caused so much trouble, telling everyone that my adoptive parents kidnapped her child. I couldn't tolerate her behavior. I contacted the cops immediately. They were both arrested. I sued them for harassment, 
and also defaming my adoptive mother by calling her a kidnapper. The court asked if I would accept a fine and I agreed. My mother was fined with $8,000 instead of serving a two-year jail term, and my brother was fined $5,000 for being an accomplice. I was satisfied, as I knew they would find it hard to pay back. The court gave them a period of three months to pay, or they'd both serve three years each with hard labor. My adoptive parents supported me, as they weren't in support of my mother's actions. Of course, my mother and brother weren't able to pay up after three months, so they borrowed from a biker gang to pay. I hear they are now on the run, as the biker gang is, after their lives, because they owe them a huge amount, so they change states every time and are depressed. It isn't enough punishment for their actions, but I was satisfied. It would have been even better if my father was alive to get his punishment. I learned he died after a fatal and gory accident. I guess the universe gave him his punishment. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below saying I subscribed and we will try our best to reply to your comment.